right now. Um, before further delay, I also would like to introduce my two colleagues, uh, Desiree Eng and Darren Lesuski, as I will be uh, uh, doing the presentation. Unfortunately, I won't have access to the screen or to the chat or to any of the other issues that appear in the screen. So please feel free. Darren is very knowledgeable about all these topics. He's very, very capable with the keyboard. He's faster than a, than a light lighting. So let us know. We will try to help you as much as I can. As uh, uh, Matt already mentioned, we will try to make it a little bit more practical today. So Darren, you want to introduce yourself? No, hello everyone. Just uh, here to help, here to support Francisco. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, Desiree. What about you? Morning, everyone. Thank you for taking time to join the, the day two uh, of the sessions. Uh, I'm here to support Francisco and uh, welcome again. Thank you very much. Okay, so before the delay, welcome everybody. Bienvenue to Le Monde. Bonjour. So I wish to start by acknowledging that since I'm in Vancouver, I'm on the traditional territory of the Salis nations of Squamish, Muscium, and Slail Wantut, First Nations. So I recognize that we all work in different places and therefore you may be working in a different indigenous traditional territory. In a true spirit of reconciliation and understanding, I encourage you to take a few moments to think about this and use it as an inspiration to find real reconciliation. Thank you very much. So let's start it. I will try to share my screen. Uh, this is the key moment in the presentation. I usually ask people for their prayers because I'm very bad with technology. Can anybody tell me if they see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. So I will start it for uh, <clears throat> For today, uh, today this is the mechanics that I will try to do in the presentation. Today, the presentation will be very, very, very practical. Hopefully, you will remember or you have fresh most of the topics that we covered in the first uh, session. The goal will be for you to try to have a more practical, more dynamic approach and keep in mind about the importance and the availability of the data. So we will be going flashing to our website. I already sent uh, to Matt a guide for how to, to access since the beginning, since, since, our, since our welcome screen, most of the data that you have available in our website for the census. So feel free to have it handed in case that you need some clarifications, you have some doubts. Hopefully I will, I will clarify those things, if not, let us know. We will try to make it easier for you. And again, in this case, I would like to remind you, this is going beyond the proverbial uh, showing the, the people to, to fish and avoiding to ask for food. This is basically inviting you to not be afraid of putting your hands in the river and get the fish that you need because the data is there. It's a matter that you have to, to be familiar. You have to try to figure out the best ways for yourself because the good thing about the, the our website is that you can access our information in many, many, many ways. And the bad side is that you can access of information in many, 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 many ways. And especially for, for people who is novel in the use of our website or novel in our data, this could be very, very confusing. We recognize that. Uh, but once that you began to figure it out, the mechanics, the logic, the possibilities with the data that are there, how to access, how to make the right interpretation, bingo, then you will see that is very, very easy and could help you to understand better or to start your path in the right direction for the way that you need to collect or to use the data that is available. Not necessarily all the data that you need will be in our website or is the Statistics Canada's uh, uh, data, but still, we are very sure that if you are in doubt, if you don't know exactly where to start or what uh, information to look for, 
or website can give you a very, very good, or data can give you a very, very good links or very good uh, uh, hints in what data to use, how to use it, where to find it, how to recognize it, how to make the interpretation, et cetera, et cetera. So today uh, we will make a, a, excuse me, a trip into our website. First, I will explain the, the theoretic or most of the principles that are behind that. Uh, the way that we we uh, disseminate data, data visualizations is one of the topics that is very, very uh, popular right now because a lot of people is demanding for that. We will see a, a few examples and why is that important. We will be talking about the census profile that is the basic unique of information or the basic tabulation of information that we have for almost any geography that is in or uh, Hierarchy, we will talk about data tabulation that are cross tabulation in between variables that usually provide a lot of information that will help you to understand better how to deal with all those issues when you are working in looking for data. Some research considerations for your own self is kind of uh, I, this is a session that I really like it because more than recommendations, they are uh, planted as questions to let you know how to go with them. A little bit of beyond 2020, why could be important for you to use this software or, or at least to know the option that you can have there. We already have another session for beyond 2020 that if I remember correctly will be around June 20. You are more than welcome to join us for that session. It's about one hour, one and a half hour with a little bit of practice and some notes about that. And then how to access our data in our website with a practical tip. So, the highlights for the data products, as I mentioned before, we will be visiting our website. Uh, but before, let's let's try to introduce or let's try to explain some of the information that we are going to explore there, because it's important for you that in your mind is clear what is the difference between census uh, profile, data uh, uh, tabulations, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, of course, the, the the visual information that is there. So we put the information in several fashions. None of them, I have to admit it, none of them are usually completing meeting or fully meeting your requirements. But you began to put all those pieces together and chances are that you will have a better perspective of what is happening with your data. How can you use it? And uh, as you may see, we will be talking about all those things in uh, progressively. And hopefully you will find the one data source that will fit better your expectation and your possibilities available. And I strongly suggest at this moment, don't limit yourself in your mind. Try to go beyond that. Try to use all the possibilities there. Data visualizations is the first part, is the simplest way to put information. We like data visualization in the sense that uh, when we are using that graphic display of data, uh, now it's very noticeable, it's very demanded, it's uh, a, a way that given the, the level of technology that we have reached, is more or less accessible and possible to put it in a very, very good way. It's easy to communicate and disseminate data using this, this uh, media. Believe it or not, we started using some infographics in 2017 and some uh, interactive data boards. In 2017, there were only one data board and one infographic that appears uh, sometime in uh, in the middle of 2017. The next time, the next one appears almost at the end of, of the year. And since then, basically, we are producing infographics in a uh, daily basis. So right now we have a total of almost 200 different uh, uh, visualization displays that has been created for almost any data that has been disseminated with almost every topic that we are covering since 2070. So graphic data visualization has a big impact because you see it's using usually the highlights and more important elements of any result. As you can see here, for example, one of the characteristics of data visualization is that put or give a lot of information in a very easy way to display the information and is very attractive to the to the site and is very easy to digest, to follow the ideas that are behind any data that is displayed there. So 
a good data visualization is easy to follow, is easy to email the interpretation, is attractive for your audience, and usually will hook your audience or will hook your curiosity in terms of what is next. Okay, data visualization has the limitation that usually cannot go in the details or cannot go very deep, but you can see here, for example, you can have a very good idea how is the, the language spoken predominantly at home, how are the most important language uh, uh, that are not the official language spoken in, in Canada, uh, what other languages are spoken in Canada, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's exactly the idea for the visualization that will give you sometimes very simple information like this map about the, the uh, metropolitan areas and what is the other languages beyond the, the, the uh, official language that are more spoken and help you to understand what is going on in a very fast uh, uh, fashion. So this is something that you right away will capture, you right away will understand and you right away put a very good idea of them. But in my opinion, in most of the cases, especially when you are doing reports, when you are doing research, this is just the beginning. It could be also more uh, 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 detail, like for example, the Income Explorer that is dynamic. The fact that we see here on the top that we can go for different variables and we can manipulate those variables means that you can have different uh, 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 results according to the way that you manipulate the data input for dashboard is something that is getting more complicated, that is getting more uh, sophisticated, but is producing more detailed information. When we go to the to website, maybe we can have visit or that. The second level of information or the second sources that we use for disseminating some data in Statistics Canada is the census profile. The census profile is the most common or maybe the most popular. We don't have, unfortunately, uh, a, a number or an account that estimate this with a solid metric to say this is the place that is visited more frequently. But for all Spanish, more people when they make reference or when they ask for questions or when they ask for more data, usually they make reference to the census profiles, okay? Uh, the census profile uh, are basically a very, very intensive account or a very, very comprehensive account of the main characteristics of any geography there. If you remember from the first session, we will be talking about uh, there were around uh, 80, between 80 and 80,000, uh, 80 and 81,000 people uh, geographies in all the levels of the hierarchy that we are talking. So that's exactly the number of census profiles that are available in our website. And if you think that, and of course it goes from the most general uh, geography that is Canada, the country, to the smallest one that is the dissemination area. And every single profile accounts for more than 2,600 lines of data. So you began to count all these lines here that start with the population in 2001 and the population in 2016, and then bingo, it will go all around for around 17 different topics. And in each topic, they account for the most comprehensive uh, categories in almost every single variable that we have data from the, the census. So you can see that this is a humongous well of data that is available for you seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So you can find all the information that is there. When we go to our website, we will be talking about more details about that. Hopefully I will be able to show you what are the main uses, how can you, a little bit of the things that you can used to extract more information from there. Uh, how can you use that in your benefit, et cetera, et cetera. But keep in mind, this is information that is very, very extensive. The big limitation with this kind of information is that that information is what we call uh, unidirectional or linear. So basically it's just a very extensive enumeration of most of the variables with the most extensive or the most generic uh, categories that include that variables. But 
will give you a good idea, a good description about your community. And that's very, very, very important in terms that this could be usually the starting point. That's the reason why we say we don't have a metric to compare that this is the most popular uh, a tool or the most popular data dissemination that we that is used in Statistics Canada. But given the characteristics and given the or experience in the way that clients refer to the information that they have captured, sure chances are that this is the most important or the most uh, visit place in or website regarding the census for data. The next step will be the data tables. Data tables are a little bit more sophisticated in terms of the data dissemination because as we mentioned before the profiles are very extensive they try to be or uh, uh, they are unidirectional they are linear they are unidimensional so an enumeration in the case of the data tables we are talking about cross tabulation with several variables at different levels of geography so you can see that the value of the enrichment, the, the sophistication of the information that is available there will be enhanced for that. These are the main topics that are grouped, most of the variables. And from there, then you begin to, to, to be able to do some uh, uh, cross tabulations and extract more information in a more detailed way. We will see two examples here in the, in the presentation about how you can work with that and then hopefully we can see that in the uh, uh, way that you consider or that you explore the data when we are when you are visiting our website. Uh, one of the things that <clears throat> you have to keep in mind when you are using these data tables is again the richness of that. And the good thing about this richness is that they are a lot of the of tabulation. There are more than 400 tabulations dedicated just to this cycle of the census. In total, there are almost 3,000 tabulation, cross tabulations dedicated to the census. But for this cycle of the census, there are uh, around 440 or 445 uh, tabulations, more than 440 for sure. And we're still producing more tabulations. They will be, uh, they are already announced, another set of tabulations that will be uh, released or disseminated this summer. We're expecting that to happen at the end of June or beginning of July. And another one in the fall with more topics or most cross tabulations that people are demanding. That's the other thing. We are constantly listening to our data users. If somebody said that they need more information about that, we try to make the effort to produce that information in these tabulations for free to make it available for them all the time in our website. So this is important for the, the data user, of course, and for us that they can have access to that information. So when we are talking about cross tabulation, this is the way that the information is produced, okay? Basically, we have a title that used to be, that, that usually has a description of the main topic and the geography that is describing. We have the number tabulation. Most of the tabulation from the census will start with the prefix 98-10- and then the name, the number of the tabulation. And then some of the things that you have to consider is how that title is describing in the details. We account for the geographies. So for example, in this case, please keep in mind or trying to remember or your geographies and our hierarchy that we will be talking in the previous uh, presentation. In this case, we talk about a tabulation that covers information for the whole country at the provincial territorial level also, at the census division, and at the census subdivision. So basically it goes down from the national level to the municipal level in that uh, 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 spectrum of possibilities. And then the universe is the people population 15 years of age and older. So that means that in this case, we are talking about marital status for people who is becoming legally illegible to change their marital status. And the variable list is marital status, gender, census, year, age, and thus in those fashion. The numbers that appear in parentheses tell you the number of categories that each variable has. 
Okay, so in this case, for example, marital status has 13 categories and here are described. Usually, when you regularly access to the table, you don't have this detailed description. You will have it inside the table, but not as part of the title. We put it here, we add it here as an extra piece of information so you can have an idea. So for example, the, the gender, just, we say three. Well, what are the three genders? Well, one of the categories is the total. So we counted that as a category. And then the other will be men plus and women plus. And finally, for example, in this example, we also include age. So that say that age, we have 16 different categories for age. The first one being total, and then the, the youngest one, 15 to 19, up to 85 and older by different grouping of periods of time for the age categories. In the description of the table, then you can figure it out that this tabulation covers both cycles of the censuses, 2021 and 2016. This is not necessarily common. The only reason why some tables are like that is because through the years, through the cycles, we have tracks and people traditionally began to ask for certain tabulations to be more extensive or more comprehensive about data, and then we try to meet that demand by using them. But in most cases, the data is published only for the census cycle data, in this case 2021, that is referring to. And then the table, as you see it, is like this. You began, you choose your geographies, you choose, uh, uh, in this case, Alberta and Edmonton. You choose the genders, that is total men and women plus. The years, in this case, is for income. So it referred to the previous year of the, of the census. Keep that in mind when we are talking about the uh, income. We don't cover the year of the census. We cover the previous year because that's the year is, is referenced and we have all the information, 15 and 20. And all the variables that are included there. So in this case is age, gender, year, individual low income status, according to the limb, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see the dynamic that is behind there. In this case, for example, the universe is persons living in private households, okay? And one of the things it also covers is 100% of the data. What is the difference between 100% and other percentage of the data? Usually, the our values here will be 100% when it refers to the total population. That means that we are producing this data without sampling. Keynes either for direct collection from, from uh, administrative data or from the short form census, or 25% of the data. That is usually information that came directly from the long form census of the data. Remember, the long form census of the data is a census, but still is really, is managed as a census, but still is really a survey that is complete, but one in every four households in Canada. Okay, so you can see, uh, remember we were saying at the beginning of the first presentation that God and the devil are in the details. That's exactly what we mean for that. You can see that a lot of the small details that seems to be sometimes redundant or seems to be uh, uh, not necessarily, but will add precision at the way that you see the data, that you make the interpretation of the data, and hopefully will help you to make better use of the data. This is very, very, very important because that way you will feel more confident and you will be reporting exactly what the data is telling you about the information that you are seeing and that you are presenting. So we will be, don't worry if if you think that is, this is too much, it is too much. We recognize that. My apologies for that, but that's the nature of this kind of information. That is a wealth of information. I will make reference to, again, to the small guide that we put together, trying to give you some hints about how to use our information, how to access our information, how to, to use of information. And later on, we're still having a good record of time right now. Later on, we'll go on visiting our website and figure it out how to use, how to access that information. And hopefully, I will give you some extra hints in practice that will help you to understand and to use better the data. Okay, so let's do 
let's talk about some tips and, cons and, and considerations. Basically, these are more kind of tips in terms of the methodology that you may be using or the considerations that you may have to, cons to put in, in place when you are trying to use the data. Uh, I would like to, to remind you the census is a wealth of information, is the most comprehensive survey that takes place in Canada for any reasons at any level. But it still doesn't have all the answers. So keep that in mind because any data set that you will be working has some limitations. But this is one of the ones that will help you to understand, to be safer in the way that you are using, understanding and reporting the data. So the first thing that you want to know is what is the scope of your research, OK? Will be satisfy all the questions. You don't necessarily need to be sophisticated. There are sometimes simple on variant analysis, basic information that appears as they are in many, many of the, in, in all the, the census profiles that will understand some, some of the information, or you need more detailed information to go to the cross tabulations. What will be the best uh, uh, data that you may have? Chances are that you will be jumping in between. They will be interacting in between both of them. You want to have an idea of what is happening in your community by using the census profile and then how it behaves more in detail with regarding other possibilities, age categories, uh, immigration status, uh, gender, et cetera, et cetera, for those same variables according to certain set of criteria that you have set. The level of geography, this is also very, very, very important. Remember, that's the reason why you have to understand where exactly things are happening. Because when we we will, hopefully we will see, for example, when we ask for information about Edmonton, Edmonton is a very loose denomination. And in general, any geography name could be very, very loose in those terms, because Edmonton could mean the city of Edmonton could mean the, the municipality of Edmonton, could mean the central population of Edmonton, could mean the, the economic region of Edmonton, could mean the census metropolitan area of Edmonton, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to be pre precise on those things, and then you can use that precision in your favor to have a better understanding on the issues, on the data that you are collecting and interpreting. And then finally, what are, are the uh, confidentiality rules and thresholds because even though we collect all the information for all the households in all the places that are available, still some information may not be available given the confidentiality uh, uh, thresholds that are in place for certain kind of information that is there. It's not that we want to to just to uh, uh, make fun of you that, hey, we have information, but we don't pass you, blah, blah, blah. No, it's just that we are very concerned about uh, confidentiality and privacy. And if we don't want to put in risk or respondent to be in a position of vulnerability because his or her information, their information are there and is susceptible to be singularized or identified by any data user or any combination of, of possibilities there. Think about the universes. Remember, the variables should be related to the same universe. You cannot talk about the uh, uh, median income of a dwelling, but you can talk about the median income of an individual. You can talk about the median income of a family. And when we are talking about family, you have to be precise in terms of is a census family or is an economic family. You can talk about the uh, median income of a household. And sometimes the household is exactly the same as a census family or is an economic family or is a diverse, diversified group of families that are there. And again, the only way that you will be able to distinguish about all those things is because you know well what are the principles and what are the definitions that are linked to that kind of variables and universes. And we make a lot of emphasis in the universes because this is the, the largest, the more comprehensive uh, uh, way to put uh, 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 the, the issues that we're measuring and hopefully will help you to understand and we'll put things in a little bit more of perspective. 
there could be some exchange or there could be some inclusion in one with others, but others are completely independent or completely different. And then you want to keep that in mind in order to avoid any confusion or any frustration in terms that you want to report something that simply is not there, hasn't been measured. So then the, the information is not available for you, okay? So variables are very important. We have a set of about 380 variables or 320, I don't remember by, by now, but variables basically is all the possibilities that we are measured in or a, a respondent, okay? At this moment, I would like to make emphasis, please, 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 when you are in doubt about the variable that you want to check, use or reference guides, especially the dictionary, the data dictionary is very, very important because it will give you a very simple definition of what is the variable, what is measured, and a very good and very uh, uh, succinct, very concrete explanation of the evolution of that variable. Sometimes, sometimes happens that we keep the same name of the variable, but they can be different definition from one a uh, uh, census cycle to another, or we are using the same concept, but we change the name of the variable. And in the census dictionary, you can find most of that information. And that's important because sometimes you want to establish some comparability. And if you are one, if you are comparing some variables, you want to compare apples with apples, not apples with oranges, okay? So always, always check to see if something has been done in terms of change it, or in terms of keeping the, the consistency of the of the data and use the variables as they are defined. A lot of people in the vernacular or in our everyday vocabulary, for example, we use the term family, we use the term uh, uh, dwelling or household or salary as something that everybody will understand as concepts that are universally well understand and we have a common knowledge of the meaning of those uh, 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 words. But in reality, this could be very, very different in the census. In the census, salary is just part of the income. So we don't report about salary, we report about incomes. So you have to be very precise. When we are talking about census, we have two different kinds uh, families, sorry, we have two different kinds of, of families. The census family that is linked or is closer to uh, the concept of the most traditional concept of, of family or the economic family that encompass, comprehends all other possibilities of living arrangement for all other individuals. Remember, in the census, we are not interested only in the majority or in the most common or in the traditional issues. We are interested in collecting everybody's information. So we have to make considerations for all kinds of arrangements that are there and not necessarily are all of them uh, the traditional concept of a family in this case, okay? So keep that in mind, it's very, very important. We will show you uh, where to find all guides and dictionaries and also how to browse data tables by variable. Hopefully it's a tool that will help you to understand or to localize your information faster in these terms, our goal will be to go in that direction, to try to make you feel more comfortable to look for the information and to find it faster for you. So that way you can have a better use of the information. And finally, historical data. Sometimes you want to put your data in perspective just to make a good chronology or a good case in terms of how things have been changing. I don't know in the last 10 years, in the last 20 years, in the last generation, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to have comparability in the geographies. Geographies in Canada I have good news, are very dynamic, but at the same time I have bad news, they are very dynamic. So what that doesn't mean is good news because they will uh, uh, reflect all the changes in, in the society right away, and that's good. But the bad news is that if you are not aware of, of those changes, if you are comparing just by using one general denomination, bingo, you can be comparing without noticing grapes with apples, and then that will be very, very difficult to reconcile, to find 
the real issue that you want to, sh to show. Also the same with, var with variables. As I mentioned before, sometimes the variables keep the same name, but has a different concept or keep the same concept, but has a different name. You want to see the data dictionary is a very good tool available for that. You want to see that the variables as they are defined or as you are considering are exactly the same for everybody or for everything that you are comparing. Or if not, you are letting your audience know that the difference may be due to methodological issues more than difference in the issue that you are measuring or you are reporting per se. You have to also to consider in 2011, in instead of have the long form census, we have the National Household Survey. Uh, the methodology was completely different. So those data could be used as reference, but they are not directly comparable to any census data. So if you are comparing data, you want to have a, a time series on an historical series. In 2011, chances are that for some data that was just covered in the long form census, there will be a gap for that year because the National Household Survey can be used as a reference, but is not comparable. It's not methodologically correct to make comparisons between the NHS and the long form census in between censuses for that year. And the other thing is that many, many of the reports that we are producing, especially with regarding finances or with regarding the incomes, are in current dollars. So for 2020, we report 2020 dollars. For 2015, we reported 2015 dollars, unless is other ways uh, uh, clarified in the tabulations that you are consulting. Okay, so be very careful again. Remember, God and the table uh, are in the details. So you want to have uh, those two people that are very, very powerful on your side. So you want to be sure that those details, you are in domain, you understand them, you can figure it out how to use it in your favor, or you are consciously reporting them for all your audience to be aware of the potential, the limitations of your data. Remember, the perfect data set doesn't exist. The census is a data set, so it's not an exception. You just want to have the most out of it for the good reason. Remember, most of our data is available for free on our website. We will be doing a, a, a trip in the next few minutes. You can also get data from the provincial and territorial statistical agencies, e especially uh, the people from Alberta is very, very lucky because the provincial information and data uh, office that is depending on the provincial government uh, purchase a lot of data from Statistics Canada. We have a very good arrangement with them. Uh, they are very generous in, in uh, collecting, in, in getting data and producing or uh, asking by paying for some specific, uh, very specific data for Alberta. And once that is with them, most of the time, allows other agencies and the general public to have free access to that. So take advantage of that. OK, uh, there are some other uh, government portals that are open. Remember, the census is the survey per uh, uh, definition, is the benchmark, is the reference survey that we, you have uh, access to. But in some cases, there are topics that we don't cover in the in the census. And the best way that you can do it is use it as a reference for more uh, uh, possibilities with other data that is there, okay? The combination of data not necessarily means that you can do some direct inferences from any survey relating by the, to, the, to the census, but it could mean that you can make a reference, okay? If this is reporting in the survey and the census is telling us this, we can expect this or we can expect that. Be very careful in the language, of course, because it's not necessarily that direct or, or making some implications that not necessarily are there, but it could help you to have a better perspective. Remember, the census is the benchmark of the data. There's also some data available in libraries and archives, and the universities, universities also has a good uh, wealth of data. And most of those sources are free or available for free to access. 
So take advantage of all the possibilities that are there. Uh, we also have the open data license. This is a more specific kind of, of agreement when your agency is using too much data. We will visit the website there just to let you know. Basically, we encourage the use of the data from there. Uh, you will recognize that the intellectual property of the data and, and belongs to Statistics Canada. You will acknowledge that. And most of the time, you can use that data for your own analysis and benefit in a very, very, very large volume. So at this moment, I would like to stop sharing my screen and then I will invite you to say your prayers because I will try to go to our website and has a little bit of a trip to talk in a little bit more detail of the issues that we were covering here very, very generally in a very theoretical way. Any comments, any questions? Just let me get back to here. I will just... Oh. Okay, so here we are. No comments, no questions? Everybody's still awake? I hope so. I'm counting on that. So at this moment, I will start sharing my screen with the aim to go to our website. Everybody seeing my, my screen with the, our website? Uh, yes. Are you on the data page? Yeah, in the data page. Yes. So I will open, I will open another. Uh, no, I will go from here. Okay. Be patient because sometimes uh, the 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 speed of the internet is not as fast as we wanted. Uh, but the issue is that most of the information that I will be showing in the next few minutes is already in the in the small guide that we already passed it to to Matthew. And Matthew make us the favor to to pass it to you. And the goal again is to invite you to encourage you to go for the data. We know. The good news about the Statistics Canada website is that it's full of data. The bad news is that it's full of data. It's good news because once that you are more or less familiar, you will feel very, very encouraged to try to do more things. The bad news is that, especially at the beginning, is very overwhelming. And sometimes that creates a lot of frustrations because people will say, well, there's so much information that I don't know where to go, what to see, where to look for the information, okay? So we will guide you for the main uh, uh, sources or the most recommended sources that you can use to collect uh, or to use uh, or, or access to the data from the census. And from there, hopefully, you will feel more adventurous and with more confidence to try other possibilities there. So let's start it. I will try to go with telling you most of the hints that I regularly use in most of the tricks that I regularly use it, feel free to use the one that you feel more comfortable. As I mentioned before, uh, the way that the, 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 the web or website is designed is like a, a Roman approach in terms that all the roads lead to Rome, but sometimes that could be confusing. I'm showing you the most common or the shortest or the one that I think make more logic in the way that we access the information, but if you find or you have other ways, other roles to access the information and they are helpful for you, they are effective for you, you're familiar with that, I, rec I recommend you to keep it that doing that way, but you will have hopefully more alternative with this. So this is our uh, uh, web page, welcome in English, you can see here, is in English is the start page and most of the data that we will be looking or most of the information that we will be looking is related to this blue ribbon that is on the top. So in this case, I will invite you to go to the census tab and click on the census of the population. So this is the page for the census data. And over here, you have a set of option, options that will lead you to the information that you are looking for, but which one is the better? Which one is the one you have to follow? So I will start systematically. 
As I mentioned in the presentation, the first one, the most popular or the one that is recommended because of simplicity and comprehensiveness in the way that it covers the data is usually the census profile. But if you look at here, census profile are nowhere in C inside. So to access to the census profile, you have to click here in the census data. All these tabulations are active uh, links. So you click in the census data and right away in this page, you will have access to census profile, HALA tables, data tables, focus on geography series. We will be looking here, census profile and data tables later on. I will avoid the focus on the geography series because it's a, uh, they are very, very heavy pages. It's very, very time consuming to download. And in this platform, it could take ages to, to download it. But you feel free to explore by yourself. Again, remember, these are the tools that you hopefully will have handily of the time and will help you to explore by yourself furthermore with more detail. This is very, very brief with the most basic one uh, uh, possibilities to cover in order for you to understand better what are the possibilities there. I strongly suggest you go to the census profiles and then in the page of the census profile, you will have this a welcome uh, 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 screen. So when you're in the census profile, you have several possibilities. Let me go down to the to the page. So you will browse by the most common geographies that are the provinces and the territories or the most common municipal uh, uh, census metropolitan areas. Like you can see here Calgary, you can see here Edmonton, Toronto, Winnipeg, Victoria, Vancouver, Quebec, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the main urban centers in our country, or you can have access from profiles from the previous census, 2016 out to 2006. In this case, we will forget a little bit by the, by the moment about the uh, uh, previous uh, uh, censuses, and I will uh, type something that is, I assume, of uh, interest for all of you. One of the things that I want to say since the beginning, uh, I don't remember we covered this in detail. We or you can use a lot the postal codes. The postal codes are not geographies from Statistics Canada. Postal codes are geographies that belongs to the Canadian uh, uh, post, to Canada post, but it's still there's a lot of information that could be linked to the postal code in our website. You will never find any geography that meets exactly the boundaries of the postal codes that use uh, uh, Canada Post, but still you may find something that is related. I will show you by using one of the postal codes that I have been already using for other presentations. This is in Edmonton, and when you click it, you go there and you will see that when you are clicking, this is the paradox of the information. We don't have any control. This is not our geography. We uh, That geography doesn't belong to us. That is the postal code, but it still it can be your master key to have access to a lot of the information that is there because our website will recognize that this postal code belongs to the province of Alberta, to the census subdivision of Edmonton, to the census metropolitan area of Edmonton, to the census division number 11 that is in Edmonton, to the federal electoral district of Edmonton Center, to the census, to this census tract that is in Edmonton, that dissemination area that is in Edmonton, to the population center that is Edmonton, to the economic region that is Edmonton, to the aggregate dissemination area. And again, remember from last, last session, all of these geographies we will be talking about. So now you can see how they are clustering together to give us this piece of information. So let's say that, okay, now let's change our focus. So instead of going exactly to that uh, postal code, we want to choose one Edmonton. What Edmonton or which of those Edmontons is better or is the real Edmonton? Well, the good news and the bad news, my friends, is that all of them are good and none of them could be necessarily the one that you are looking for because it will be depending on your goals and your necessities, okay? 
So be careful with that because again, I would like to make emphasis to the presentation that we, the previous presentation has a good domain, a good control, a good knowledge of all the geographies present. It will help you to understand better how to choose the geography that is important, that is relevant, that is really related to your goals, to your objectives, to the data need, to, to the data needs that you are in the working with. So in this case, out of uh, uh, facilities, I will choose the census metropolitan area of Edmonton because I think it's the one that has more versatility to show in this example. You click here and then the profile for the census metropolitan area of Edmonton will appear. And I will be making a very, very, very fast uh, uh, travel to the to the profile. You can see the uh, uh, only data that came from 2016 is the po total population data from the census metropolitan area of Vancouver, of Edmonton, sorry, in 2016. The rest is just data from the last census. And you can see the richness, the extensiveness, the comprehensive or the vastity of this kind of tabulation, this information that is there. Lines and lines of information of all the variables that you can imagine for almost every variable that we collect in the census. But now let's focus in some other details. The first one, when you click in this E value, you can have, we already seen that, you can have access to the map that will help you to figure it out where we are looking for or what is the issue. You can have also some classification in the hierarchy in terms of what census subdivisions or what municipalities or uh, Indian reserves that are also in the same level of classification and municipalities will form part of the census metropolitan area. Okay, so you can see the city of Edmonton is part of the census metropolitan area of Edmonton. And then you will check here for other tabulations that are related to that. So for example, when we talk about, uh, we can come back to the, the tabulation and in the, the profile, we already see you can add some geographies or you can add and remove data. My suggestion most of the time, especially when you are beginning, please select, click here. So all the selection for all the topics will disappear and then just go for the one or two that are more relevant for the topic that you are looking. I always, always have highlighted the population and dwellings because that will give me a demographic background on that. And then I will choose for whatever other topic I will be looking for. Right? Let's say I like to go for about income. Income is very popular. And then in income are all those topics. So you can see there is a range of possibilities there. In this case, I will just click this value and then I will go here and I will go, I will want to go for total for men, women, counts and race. You can choose here. You can say, no, I just give me the race or you just give me, give me the counts or you just give me the race. It will be up to you or you just give me the totals or you just give me that information for men or you just give me for men and, and women, or you just for women, et cetera, et cetera. So I will just, for brevity, I will just choose this way, total counts. I will put race also because I think it's important. And bingo, apply, and then the size, you can see the size of the bar here on the side, the size of your profile diminishes significantly, is a little bit easy to manage, is a little bit easy to work with, and will help you to understand or to compare all the variables that are there. And of course, most of the time, you want to add some context to that, and then you will say, oh, okay, I will compare these values to, uh, let's say, the city of Edmonton, how the census metropolitan area is different to the uh, uh, census uh, 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 municipality of the city of Edmonton, and right away, you began to see what is the differences in between. You can add up to four different geographies to compare. And as you can see, that will hopefully give you more 
a value for whatever you are looking into your profiles, okay? So you have a reminder of what has been happening before with this information. We covered this also more or less in detail in the previous session. So let's come back then to the census of population page and go back to the census data. And now let's explore the data tabulations. Remember, data tabulations are basically cross tabulations of several variables. So the next level of sophistication that will help you to understand better your population, okay? The, the community that you are studying. When you are talking about the data tabulation, you have two options. Over there are three, but I will just touch very briefly for those two options, the main two options. You select a topic. Remember in our previous uh, uh, example, which of we go for income, you can say, okay, let me go by income, and then you will see there are a set of 58 different tabulations that has the topic of income. And at this moment, I will take the, the opportunity again to analyze what we were been talking before in terms of all the, the tabulations will be presented with the title, in this case, household total income, group by household characteristics and then describe the geographies that covers okay in this case is for big urban centers the next one is uh, also for big urban center and the next one includes also census divisions and subdivisions so that means municipalities many of the tabulations are very similar just with different sometimes with different uh, levels of geography that they are covering and then you began to see, okay, so this is the table number. You maybe want to keep a, a, a track of that. The geographies that are describing that usually coincide with the ones that are in the uh, uh, title. And then the universes in this case uh, is saying that it's taking some data from the 2021 census, 25 sample, and some data from the 26 census as 100% of the data. That means that for this case is, or for most of the, some of the cases, it will be from the administrative case, uh, uh, data that we have uh, available from the Canadian Revenue Agency and some other geographies or, or years or variables will be only for the long form census. And then the variables that is included. So a structured title dwelling, household type dwelling, family structure and household income statistics. All of them has a number in parentheses, so that means that the structural type of dwelling has nine categories. The household type, uh, including census family structure, has 11 categories. Household income statistics has 16 categories. And then a brief description. The good news about this is that even though it could be a little bit more demanding on time to go table by table, but it still can save you to go visiting every single table to check it out if this is the kind of information that you are looking for. So this is the first way that you can use a strategy to look for the information. The other one, the one that I strongly recommend, the one that I regularly use more frequently is browsing by variable. Because what I like it about this browsing by variable, and again, I'm telling you that in my very personal perspective, okay? So you may find otherwise or one way that I mentioned better than the one that I recommended, that's perfectly true. But I like this because it came, so remember I was mentioning there was more than 380? Yeah, it was correct, not 320. 380 through different variable that we have in the census. That's the way that we cover the information in the census, okay? and it has an alphabetic order of all the variables that are there. The way to look at this issue is when you are dealing with the variables, you have a plus sign and a number in parentheses. So the number in parentheses will tell you how many categories are for age 10 or for age 10A. So the difference are very subtle. Like for example, the, the variable age has different around 20, for different versions and the, the differences between the levels of the categories that are there. And is related to another 12 or 14 different variables that are not as directly age, but they are related to that. So when you click in the plus sign here, 
you will find the description of the categories that are included for that specific way of presenting the variable. So for example, you can see right, right oh, this is the category that has the detail that I needed, or you will say, no, this is way too much. I will go for a level of, of uh, detail that is less than that, because that will account for whatever I need without exploding the size of the data that I need. So maybe, excuse me, H11 will have better results for you than H16. And you can see, be very careful because most of the time, all the total are considered a category itself. So people get sometimes very frustrated because, oh, they are telling me there is 11 categories and I'm just seeing only, only 10, what is happening? Well, the total also count as their own category. And when you click in the uh, uh, variable per se, let me go to another one that I think is, is very interesting. Uh, shelter cost, for example. So shelter cost here is five categories. Over here is 12 categories. So when you, to come uh, to income radio, eight categories, when you click in the variable, bingo, it will give you access to all the tabulations where that variable with those categories are appearing. I found that this very, very useful to save time in looking for the information and to have a very perspective about other possibilities. Okay, in my opinion, this is something that you want to keep in mind because you can mm, be more effective in the use of time and collecting the information that you may need. Of course, you click in that uh, uh, tabulation and bingo, it will give you access, it's a link that will give you answers to the tabulation that it was uh, 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 presented in that in that uh, variable. Okay, so I hope that you see. And as I told you, I I don't have a life. Data is my life. I really enjoy being with that. I hope that you see the value of this. And again, this is something that no matter if I go extensively on that, you won't learn just by because you are attending this this uh, session. You will learn by practicing. Remember I told you at the beginning of the presentation this today and in the previous session, I want you to be more adventurous, to try to don't be afraid to make errors because this is the way that you will learn more about these possibilities. OK, let's go back to the tables and you can see here that also we can learn by going to the maps and in the maps you go to GeoSearch the, client, the, the link for GeoSearch. Also over here, the same uh, uh, mechanics, we already seen that before. And then the, the beauty of GeoSearch is that they will give you a direct link of all the possibilities with the data that is there. For example, this is for Canada. There are uh, uh, more than 1,300 data products, but all them come from 2006 to 2021, okay? How will you access in other ways this, uh, uh, this information? Let's go back to the census of population page and you will see that you can go to the census of uh, geographies there and then, for example, to accessing the uh, geo suite, you go for the attribute information, the attribute information products. You can go to geo suite and bingo, ta I hope that you find this familiar. Remember what is what was happening before. You can see you can use here to look for your place. In this case, we were talking about Edmonton. And again, the beauty of this is that it will appear all the possibilities that we have with Edmonton. So in this case, if we go for Edmonton, the census division, uh, uh, the census metropolitan area, bingo. Look what is going to happen also to the hierarchy here. When we clock in then some of the areas will appear that they are uh, uh, suppressed and the no uh, 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 sign will appear. There is no information for that. Why? Because the census metropolitan area is just 
link it to the census divisions, to the census tract, to the dissemination areas, et cetera, et cetera, to the population centers. So that means that we can find over here more information about these areas that are not suppressed, but not about this area that doesn't have a direct relation to the census metropolitan area. And remember, last time we saw, we have here the map that also you can add the, the labels and you can select a different, let's say, okay, I would like to have more information about the census subdivisions. I click census subdivision, the new tab will appear here in the display data results and then will tell you what are them. You can click on them and keep adding or keep finding more information about those issues. But this information is very, very generic, very, very basic, very unique. You can download, you can export this information by using the possibilities there. You can export the selection, the tables, or the uh, total package, and you can export it, sorry, oops. You can export it by using, uh, 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 selecting one of them, and then bingo, when you click apply, it will be downloaded to your machine. Okay, so, I hope that you're still awake and alive with me, guys. Let's go again to the census geography, just to remind you how can you use the map. Some people, especially when you are looking for some geographies inside the urban centers, neighborhoods, wards, districts that have a name, is very well known in their own cities, but still we don't produce or we don't process information like that for Statistics Canada. We use the codes. So then the GeoSearch that we already have seen is the best tool available. And again, I will place Edmonton and you will see, okay. Uh, uh, you have to choose from the, from the options that are here. In this case, I will go for the city of Edmonton. And then you can see right away it's telling me that all the borders here are the census subdivisions. Those are my options to choose. And the beauty of GeoSearch is that gives you some link, some direct link to the uh, uh, tabulation available for that geography that you selected. Okay, so you can see there are around 372 different tabulations that will have some information regarding to the city of Edmonton. Okay, uh, any questions, any comments? You see, this is very, very, very uh, uh, brief, very, very easy. I would like now to go again to our uh, website to the census population. Let's find another way to access the data. Okay, you can go directly to the census population or if you know the table number, you can go directly to the data. Okay, in the data, these are all the tabulations for the whole set of surveys that are available in Statistics Canada. Okay, be very careful because this this uh, menu of tabulations is very wide. So sometimes some of the of the tabs are not there. So you want to be sure that you understand or you have access or you can visualize all of the ones that appear. So basically we have tables, profiles, thematic maps, maps, public use microdata and data visualizations. OK, so you can see and then you can say, OK, I will just focus on the census and bingo. Right away, we know that we have more than 2600 tabulations just regarding the census. And you can say, no, I will just go specifically for the 2021 census. Then you click here again, and you will be going now to only the 445 tabulations that are related to this census. In this case, I like to visit this also because you can have more options. You can go by the survey, as we did with this selection in this part, you can go by the subject in the survey, okay? So of those 445 tabulations, two are for agriculture, uh, one is for children and youth, uh, 22 are for education, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or you can go for the geography. This is also very, very, very useful. 
because sometimes you say, well, you know what? I don't want to waste too much time seeing if that information is there. I will go. I know that my geography is a dissemination area or it's a census tract, et cetera, et cetera. And you say census tract and bingo. Then you will have the 20 tabulations on the 2021 census that will cover that level of geography. And you can see the title of the tabulation and the, the description of the geographies that are there and the small description of the table. Again, this could be very time consuming, but will avoid you to go to check table by table by table and, and loading each one of them. You will go to this index and then you can read. Hopefully you will find or you will get whatever you are looking for. So let's go back to the data general and I will show you. I will also have an example here. I will write the tabulation number. And bingo, this is the table that I would like. Age by primary household maintainer by tenure in the municipal level from Canada to the municipal level is regarding the private households, occupy private households in the 2021 census with 25 sample data. That means it's only data from the long form census. Those are the variables. I will have a household maintainer with nine categories, a structural type with 10 categories, household type with nine categories, three uh, different statistics and four different categories by tenure. I click on that and bingo, I have access to the table. In the table, you can change some of the parameters here or if you want to have a better view, then you will go to the add and remove data. This is a button that I cannot, I cannot emphasize how important this button it is because in that way, every single variable, you will have a chance to customize according to the way that you need it. Let's say, for example, there are, uh, we're talking about all the municipalities, there are more than uh, 5,400 possibilities with the geographies. And then you can select, when you see a plus sign, means that there are more possibilities to select here. So let's say, well, I don't want Canada, but I want Alberta, and in Alberta, I will go for the census division. I know that the census division 11 is uh, uh, Edmonton, and then over here, I could go uh, for, just to save time, I will go just for Leduc. I don't want to be looking off if I can find it, uh, to Leduc because I don't want to keep you waiting for something to appear. And then bingo, I go to the next next uh, uh, variable. Okay, so basically they are telling me topal tie structure. Well, I will be interested only in single detached house and not necessarily in relationship to the totals. Uh, household type, you can go to all of the categories or you can say, no, I will just save some of them and then I will go just for the family, uh, census family households, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can go for any of all the variables in that way. And then at the end, you customize your light out and you will say, well, you know, I will go everything in rows or most of the information in rows because I think it's easier for me to read it that way. And at the end of your selection that you're happy, you say apply and bingo. The tabulation now is for Alberta and the geography that I select, that is the division, uh, census division number 11 and the municipality of Leduc. And over here is the list of variables for a structure type, household type, age of primary, primary household and maintainer, and the numbers according to this cross tabulation of the variables that I choose. And the beauty of that is that you can download it in different versions, okay? Those are all the versions. So this is basically an Excel comma limited uh, uh, file as display. So basically you will download only the tabulation as you see it. 
Without the symbols, basically the data, you will display the symbols separate. So basically two tabulations, one with the metadata with all the symbols and one with the data as you see it. You see only the selecting data. You can do the whole information. Usually they are very, very large. You can do a customized uh, light out for more than two, two million points. There are tabulations that are very, 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 very large. In this case, it's not, a, it's not a available because the way that we are selected is not like that. Or you can go for the whole tabulation. This is usually very, very, very large tables because you can see that there's a lot of variables, a lot of uh, categories in the variables and a lot of detail. So that could be very, very, very demanding in your space and in your time. Or you can uh, download it using Vision 2020. I will explain a little bit of Vision 2020 in the next part of the presentation and you will see how it works. And hopefully you can attend one of the sessions that we are for the Vision 2020 uh, uh, presentation in the next uh, couple of weeks. I think that Matt already had make us the favor to, to do that. Uh, 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 to disseminate with you all that information. So please feel free. And again, at this moment, I will stop presenting. Hopefully you understand better now how these things are working and then we'll help you to understand better how you can use that information regarding this issue. In the notes that I uh, passed to, to Matt, I include a little bit more of detail regarding other sources that I think you can find important because we have a little bit of time. I will go to the uh, to our home if I can find it. Here it is. And then uh, census, census of population, just as a practice for you. The other one that I strongly recommend you to have uh, accessible or, or, or marketing your favorites is the census reference. In the census references, there are the dictionary that, as you can see, is an alphabetic index of all the concepts and variables and universes and issues that you have to consider into when you are uh, 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 consulting information from the census. Like, for example, in regarding age, it will tell you what is the definition to what universe or what units are uh, applied, what are the classifications, and since then has been when has been reported with some appendix. That means that the, the information that is about this, this uh, variable is so important and it has been so extensive that they add an, an specific appendices and some of the explanations about how has been the changes and the collection in these variables. So that's the reason why access to the to the census data is extremely important, is strongly uh, recommended, so you can have a better vision of what is happening. And the same will happen for every every issue that you are looking for. The same will go, for example, for family uh, census family, the definitions all the changes that have been taken, why is that way, some other uh, a reference to other guys, et cetera, et cetera. And not only that, for example, when you go to the uh, to the census family, you can go for the census family structure, census family status, et cetera, et cetera. That will help you to understand better what are the differences in between those variables. You can also check for some information about the geographies, for example, census division. What is a census division since then, since when has been reported? What are the most important issues, et cetera, et cetera. Any questions, any comments, please let me know. I will stop sharing. I don't see any hands up or I don't hear any comments. I hope that you are still awake. <laughs> and again, I would like to reiterate this, please. Um, the amount of information there is overwhelming, and that's good news in terms that there's a wealth of information there for you to grab it. But at the same time, it's bad news because sometimes if you are afraid or if you don't have an idea or it's not clear in your mind what are you looking for or how to access, 
it could be a total nightmare trying to figure it out how to gain it. But hopefully with this presentation, uh, with the experience that you will try by yourself in your own time, at your own pace, and with the guide that, uh, uh, that we prepare, will help you to understand better and to go steps further in your road, in your path, to have more information, to have better understanding of the information, and more, more important, to have the information that you need when you need it for the reason that you need it. So any questions, any comments? If I don't see any questions or comments, what I would like to propose is a 10 minutes break. Let's go back five minutes after the hour. And then we will be finishing the, uh, the next presentation and then you will have a, a chance to do your own exercise. OK, so the only reason why we do this, of course, we do this presentation, <laughs> this practice presentation is because later on you will have a chance to practice by yourself, trying to figure it out uh, a simple question or a simple problem and try to figure it out what could be the best answer for that uh, question or for that possibility there, okay? Doesn't have to be very sophisticated. You will see, we will give you some hints. Um, this is your last chance maybe to make questions. Otherwise, you have to be answering questions in the next part of the presentation. No questions. I will stop now the, the recording. And I will... Oops, I don't know if I stop it. Uh, we will continue with the next.